So what is the coolest question you got to ask them about the original that most ended up playing a hand in your work here? It's such a, that's such a fun question. David, good to see you again, sir. How are you? Good to see you, man. I'm doing well. Uh, I've got so many questions for you. Congratulations on this. I'm going to jump into it. Um, I want to start out with with a big question because honestly, Tubular Bells is, I think, some of the best use of music in any film in the history of cinema. You have to decide when to drop that needle so that it has the biggest impact on us. I'm not going to reveal when or how you do it, but how did you decide when to use that needle drop and drop tubular bells? It's it's so tempting. It's a very powerful, almost primal piece of music that Mike Oldfield created. And, and if you watch the original film, you see how sparsely it's actually used, but how it resonates. And so you take those lessons of of when and where, and we experimented with a lot of places. And at first you put it in and you overuse it, then you pull it back and you underuse it, and then you find just the right delicate balance of when to use it for proper impact. This is why you're a better director than I could ever be. I would just use it the whole movie. Just like, <laughs> it's great, the whole movie. Um, I want to discuss working, uh, without spoilers, uh, with the great Ellen Burstyn and Linda Blair. You have some experience with possession. Yes, more than I'd like. Having them around as consultants, being able to ask them as a movie fan, all the questions you've just always wanted to know about their experience on the original film. So what is the coolest question you got to ask them about the original that most ended up playing a hand in your work here? Well, for, for the most part, it's such a, that's such a fun question. For the most part, I'm sworn to secrecy on all the good dirt. But I did learn a lot from them, A, about how different of a director I am than William Friedkin in our process. Um, but how how different the industry and the theatrics of being a director is 50 years ago. So so I think that's a really fascinating thing to study just in my own profession is is making movies in 1973 is a very different arena um, uh, than it is right now. Let's introduce ourselves. I'm Damien Karras. And I'm the devil. Now kindly undo these straps. I learned ways that I think through through Ellen and Linda helping navigate, particularly with the youthful performers, how to safely go to dangerous places, how to get the effect of some of the horror, some of the terror, the expressions and the emotion that these young actresses were going to go through. I don't want to go to hell. God, play that trick on you. <laughs> Let's do it in an ethical way, supervised by teachers and child psychologists and parents. And we had teams of people working to engineer those performances and then the incredible intuition that both of these actresses had. Oh, that is fascinating. Uh, you, you mentioned uh, the late, great William Friedkin, who I am just obsessed with as a film fan. Um, so this next question is meant to be just a fun hypothetical. What is a moment from the first movie that you most wish you could have directed just to have fun with it or just know what it would have been like to be behind the camera for that moment? Wow, that's a that's a that's a epic question. Um, what would that be? You know, I'll tell you. I have a, I have a weird. End. There's a there's a scene in it that a lot of people think is disposable. But when um, uh, when the detective is entering Chris McNeil's house to interview her about Bert's death, might your daughter remember perhaps if Mr. Dennings was in her room that night? No, she was heavily sedated. It's serious. There, there's a beautiful nuance that says so much about her character through the, that conversation. That seeming, you could probably lift that scene out and nobody would know the difference. But it, it layers in so much subtlety in her, in her performance that I would love to hear what the conversation between Friedkin and Burstyn was in that um, Detective Kinnaman scene. Um, it, it, it's subtle. It's not the big set piece. In fact, it's the, the absolute opposite. It's the intimacy that I'm interested in, the connection between uh, the people in front of the camera and, the, and those behind, and what that psychology is like is always fascinating. Oh, cool answer, dude. I love that. That is fantastic. Um, look, it goes without saying that, that Father Marin arriving at the house and standing in the light, it's one of the most beautiful shots, not just in horror, but in all of cinema. And I felt like there was a moment, a shot, I'm not going to say what it is, in this film, there was a little bit of a tip of the cap to to that shot without doing the same thing. So I'm wondering, just as a movie fan, what is it about that original shot that works so well? And am I wrong that the shot that I'm thinking of is meant to be 
in an homage to the shot that that in, in the original. I, I love it because we didn't intentionally design that shot to be homage, but as we're lighting, we said, hold on, stop, don't move. There's something here. Tweak that, step here, we got it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it was that kind of a a a, a set where you can't you can't walk on a set in the morning and say, we're gonna shoot this iconic shot from a movie. Nobody can plan that. But I think when the when the when the actor or actress steps to this specific mark and the lighting hits them just right, you find those moments that give you chills and you know you're doing your job well. Oh yeah, love that. They're giving me the wrap really quick. I just need a yay or nay. A lot of controversy about whether or not the spider walk should have been in the final cut, the theatrical cut. <laughs> where, where do you stand on the spider walk down the stairs? I say nay. Nay! Nay. Oh, I love the spider walk. <laughs> hey, man. Seriously, thank you for always taking the time. Uh, thank you for fitting me in your schedule, man. Patrick, always make sure that that, uh, that I'm in. And I just want to say I appreciate you, man. Seriously, thank you so much. Hey, yeah, good talking to you as always. All right, take care, man. Bye, guys. Well, we're going, we don't need roads.